Hi everyone and welcome again to my kitchen. Hopefully the Wi-Fi will not cut out again. Um, I know in the last podcast it cut out and I froze. So hopefully this will all kind of keep going. Um, for those of you who don't know me, it's Michelle Tam of Nom Nom Paleo and every Wednesday I come on live from my kitchen and stuff happens like Wi-Fi can go out, you know, our camera could break and so hopefully it'll keep going until the end of this broadcast. I don't know why this happens because I live in the heart of Silicon Valley and our Wi-Fi never works. So it might be because everybody's on Wi-Fi and that's why I have a bad signal. So anyway, today I am making my latest recipe on my blog. It is Instant Pot Carnitas. It's super simple. I'll show you how to make it. Um, and anybody who's live and commenting, I don't even know if any of you guys are, um, but if you are, please say hello. And if you do say hello, you guys will be in the running to win a six pack of my favorite grain-free tortillas. They're made by Siete Foods. Not a sponsor, I buy this stuff myself. Um, I bought these two packs of Whole Foods. I like them a lot. They taste like real tortillas, but they're all grain-free and delicious. And so they have like a cassava and coconut one, an almond flour one, and they have like a chia, I think it's a chia and coconut one. But three people will win a six pack of this just for commenting during the live broadcast. And if this is not live, then you're not eligible, I'm sorry. And if you're not in the United States, um, and Lauren picks your name randomly. Lauren is the master builder behind the scenes at Nom Nom Paleo. Then we'll send you a cool Nom Nom Paleo swag pack that I will pack personally from my garage. Um, again, Owen, my older son, will be reading questions that I can't see and telling me, you know, asking me out loud. Lauren Wade is going to be typing uh, answers to questions that you have. Um, but this is a recipe that is from my blog and our iPhone and iPad app. It is Instant Pot Carnitas. You'll see it, it only takes a few minutes to throw together. Um, it does take probably a total of like an hour and like 15 minutes from start to finish because it takes time for your pressure cooker to come up to pressure, like 10, 15 minutes, and then it cooks for um, 35 minutes and then you have to let the pressure drop naturally, which is like 20 minutes. So this is actually a great recipe to make ahead, either on the weekend or you can throw it all together in the morning and then when you come home, it'll finish cooking and then just keep warm until you get home and then you can heat it up um, or eat it straight from the Instant Pot or crisp it up. I like to crisp it up and I will show you how I do that. And Owen has a question. So, uh, just to clarify, yes? is grain-free the same as gluten-free? Yes, yes. If there are no grains, there can't be any gluten. So it is gluten-free and grain-free. And they really are delicious. Like they're not, yes, yes, yes. So I love it. You guys can't see this, but Owen's always raising his hand to get my attention. So, um. <laughs> they train you well at public school. Okay. So, um, do these tortillas, do they like freeze well? And oh, how yeah, well yeah. do they keep in a freezer? They keep really well in the freezer. Like I think they, yeah, I keep, like if I buy a bunch, I will store the extras in the freezer and then when I'm out of the ones in my fridge, I will move it uh, the night before and they are totally cool. Yes? I am bombarding you with questions. Uh -huh. so, so I'm gonna start uh, pretty soon. Okay, uh, what was it? Uh, All right, so no. <laughs> it's okay. Oh yeah, is it Whole30 compliant? Yes, Whole30 compliant um, because there's no weird stuff, there's no added sugars. The, um, there is some orange juice in here, but it comes from a real life orange, so there's no other weird stuff in here. So I have three pounds of boneless pork shoulder. Uh, it's also called Boston butt or um, butt roast. Um, this is my favorite cut to make almost any type of pork stew. Like I would not use uh, pork tenderloin and stuff in that because that's expensive and too lean for this. You really do want a cut from the shoulder that has a lot of collagen and marbled fat because when it's cooked, um, under pressure or even low and slow, it becomes super tender and delicious. Like, so if you um, cook this and it's still tough, that just means you need to cook it longer. Like, by cooking it longer, it doesn't get tougher. So would this recipe also work with other types of pressure cookers? Oh, yeah, 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 I think so. I mean, if you have a stovetop pressure cooker, then you could probably even make this uh, 30 minutes under pressure. Because the Instant Pot and other electric pressure cookers cook at about 11 PSI. And um, stovetop pressure cookers, the one that you just put on the stove, those cook at about 15 PSI. So the difference in time is normally about 10%. 
So you can cook it a little bit faster in a stovetop pressure cooker or don't even worry about it because the small change in time doesn't make a big difference. Um, because this is something that, you know, you could cook for longer. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's not a really delicate uh, cut that you have to like quickly cook and then you have to like quickly release pressure because you're worried about overcooking it. Like this one, it's like you can't even really overcook it. Like it's just like when you make pulled pork, like you cook it low and slow forever. And that's because you're using pork shoulder. So I'm gonna um, start cooking before, <laughs> before I answer too many questions. Oh, wait one second. Uh -huh. So this is just kind of the seasoning blend that I toss this in. There's two teaspoons of diamond crystal kosher salt. And hello, Ollie. Um, and the reason why I just call out diamond crystal kosher salt is because that's the one that I use and that's the measurement that I'm using. So if you're going with two teaspoons, make sure you're using this one because salt comes in different uh, crystal sizes and if you have a finer grain salt, you'll have to like cut the amount by a third or a half. And then I've got uh, two teaspoons of ground cumin, a teaspoon of oregano, and a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. So I just put that on. And I just toss it together. Yes. So, um, if you do not live uh, near somewhere that like stocks like uh, the CFT tortillas, uh, where can you buy them online? You can buy them online on their site. I think you just go to sietefoods.com and uh, you can buy them. I think they ship anywhere in the U.S. But right now, I think that they have them in most Whole Food stores. I've seen it. I've seen it at New Seasons in Portland. Um, or as we like to call it, the pantry. <laughs> we just go there all the time when we're in Portland. Um, so I'm just tossing it all together with my hands. Um, my hands are clean. And also this is gonna be pressure cooked, so it'll all be okay. Um, and I do this because I think you can feel more if um, your seasonings are all um, evenly distributed. And so I'm gonna wash my hands. And what questions while I'm washing my hands? Oh, tell us about the new book. Tell us about the new book. Oh, there's so many things to tell about the new book. So the new book is called Ready or Not. 150 plus, make ahead, make now, no, make ahead, make over, and make now recipes by Nom Nom Paleo. So basically, whether you're ready or not, you should be able to like make dinner for your family. And it's filled with uh, every single recipe has step-by-step -step photos for every single recipe. There's cartoons, uh, there's meal plans in there, there's no recipe recipes. I mean, it is everything that we just threw, like, it, it was a labor of love, right, Owen? Like, we've yeah. been working on it for a long time. And if you go to my website, nomnompaleo.com, under cookbooks, um, you can actually go down and look at Ready or Not, and we have sample spreads in there. Amazon now has a look inside that has uh, sample pages in there. Um, we have a listing of all the recipes in our blog or on in the cookbook, but I don't know. I'm really excited. I and mean, we're really not talking about it just yet because you guys will be sick about hearing about it. So we're going to wait until it's closer to the time. Um, so I'm going to uh, dump this seasoned pork into the insert for the Instant Pot. And then I'm gonna add the other ingredients. So I'm just kind of putting it in a single layer. And people have asked like, how much maximum meat can you make in a six quart? So I like the six quart size. I have an eight quart size as well, but I think the eight quart, I just like the six quart. I think the eight quart takes a longer time to reach high pressure and it takes longer for the pressure to drop. And there is a bigger capacity, but I'd almost rather cook in two different six quarts than in the eight quart. Um, but in the six quart, I think the max amount of meat you can put in here, it's probably four to five pounds, and that's kind of pushing it. So this recipe, I don't think you can double it um, because I don't know that six pounds of uh, you know pork cubes could fit in here. But this feeds, I say it feeds six, but I, I think six, really big eaters because you know it's I mean it will shrink um, when it's cooked but I still I mean it's so hearty that I think um, six to eight it'll probably be so what I have here is an orange 
And then I what I what I what I use is a vegetable pe- veg, veg, a vegetable peeler um, to take the zest off. And I really like this particular brand. Um, these Oxo peelers I've liked forever. They're super sharp. Um, and you can see here that it doesn't take off the white pith. It just takes off the very top orange layer um, because you don't want the white pith because it uh, is bitter. So I'm just gonna carefully take um, the top layer off because I'm gonna throw that in there to give it more orange flavor. Um, because with an Instant Pot or when you're cooking under pressure, you really don't want to put a ton of liquid in here because it really, like nothing gets released or evaporated and the meat itself and the onions and everything are going to release a lot of liquid. Um, so everything will get diluted if you just keep on adding a lot of liquid in here. So this lemon zest adds a lot of um, really nice orange flavor. Did I say lemon zest? I meant orange zest, clearly. Um, gives a lot of orange flavor without adding like too much liquid to dilute everything, yes? So speaking of oranges, is there any type of orange that you would prefer um, as opposed to others? Yeah, I like um, I like the Cara Cara, like that's, that's Owen's favorite. <laughs> Navel will work, just anything that's like sweet and you know, tastes good will work in here. Um, I wouldn't do like a super sour one, um, but Cara Cara is my favorite. So then you, if you do need to zest before you cut it and juice it because it's hard to um, zest something that's already been cut. So that's just my only advice, just zest it first. And you can see here that I've kind of left pieces just because you don't need a ton. Like that is like, I've probably taken off like three quarters of it and it's plenty. And this is like a, I guess this is like a medium sized orange. It's about the size of a little baseball. Is this what a baseball? I think so. Maybe. <laughs> I know. We're not a super sporty family. <laughs> you know how big a basketball is. Oh my gosh, go. We don't want like Ew. underwear in our food. Ew. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so is this recipe. So I'm just juicing this. Can yes. this recipe be like adapted for a slow cooker? Um, I've been asked that question. I think so, yes. I think you can use the same, um, like all the ingredients are the same. You don't need to add any extra liquid because the slow cooker also retains liquid and you release all of the same amount of juices. I would cook it on low for probably eight to 10 hours and I think it should be good. I mean, I haven't tried it personally, but I'm pretty sure it would work. People have also asked if you don't eat pork, what you could substitute. Um, I'm not really sure because this is a, a pork dish. <laughs> chicken <laughs> it's maybe? Like maybe chicken thighs. Um, but if you cook like boneless, skinless chicken thighs in the Instant Pot, the cooking time is probably only 15 minutes. Uh, you could probably try cube uh, beef <laughs> chuck roast and that would work. Um, but there, I've just juiced it and then I'm gonna add the juice. And people have also asked, is that enough juice? Because the juice from one orange is about one third cup. And a lot of... um the pulp. The pulp? There's like no pulp. Okay, oh, here's um, I'll bit. catch I'm you another sorry. orange later. Um, and I know a lot of uh, pressure cooker manuals say you have to add at least like a cup or a half a cup of liquid, um, but I don't think that's really true. As, uh, well, okay, it is true if you are um, cooking things that will suck up lots of liquid, say like rice or noodles or something. Oh, you're cheering for the warrior tonight? No. Nope. Or the, the trailblazers. <laughs> I'm cheering for the trailblazers. I love the warriors, but I, I always cheer for the underdog. But as I was saying, the pork and the onions are gonna release a lot of liquid and this is gonna be plenty, trust me, trust me. I've made this like many, many times. Uh, many people have already made this recipe from my blog and they have said it is true. You end up with like a cup and a half of liquid just from the ingredients themselves, so it's totally okay. It smells good, right? So now I have a yellow onion that is quartered um, and then I'm just gonna tuck it in. And then I have like six garlic cloves that are peeled that I throw in. And then I'm gonna throw in a bay leaf. And then this, I'm just gonna kind of mix it together. The only thing is, um, because you haven't added that much liquid in here, um, you just need to make sure there's some liquid at the bottom so it doesn't, um, so the stuff doesn't start burning. And that's it. So this can totally be done in the morning. 
You could even, well, hmm. I was gonna say you could prep it the night before and put it in your Instant Pot in the morning, but I'm not sure that you want your pork marinating in orange juice overnight, but you can definitely throw it together in the morning really quickly um, and pop it in your Instant Pot. So now I'm gonna stick this in the Instant Pot and I'm gonna bring this over so you guys can see me. Actually, yeah. Uh, I think if I do it here, you guys can see me pushing buttons, right? I'm gonna plug this in. This, as I said before, is the new Instant Pot um, IP Duo Plus 60. So it's like the IP Duo 60 that I always recommend, but they've made some improvements that I think are pretty cool. Um, so first off, this is the lid. You gotta make sure the silicone gasket is tucked in nice and tight because that is what keeps everything all sealed and safe. And then you put the lid on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then you turn it to lock it. There's a top valve up here that you turn to, uh, <laughs> to the sealed position. And so then now all you do so what's different about this and the IP Duo 60 is one, there's a price difference. So I think the IP Duo 60, which is the older version that I always recommend to everyone, is now currently I think $99 on Amazon. That's the one that like goes on sale for a crazy low price, like on certain holidays. But then this new one, which is an improvement on it, this one I think is currently $119. But they have a lot of really cool things that are an improvement on that one. And one of them, actually, let me open it first, is right here on the inside of the pot, it actually tells you where the pressure cooker maximum line is for where you should fill up food. Because I think in the old one, it had a max line that was way up here, but it was not for pressure cooking. And I think that confused a lot of people. Um, because when you're pressure cooking, it should never be more than two thirds full and it should only be half full if you're making rice or pasta or something that will expand. Um, so like here, you can see that we're, we're right at like the half, half point. Um, so that's an improvement that this model has. It has this new line that tells you the pressure cooking max. Let me get this again. Um, another thing that's different and better is basically all I ever use this whole thing, like. This is now a nine in one cooker and the other one is a seven in one cooker. So it's got all these other buttons. You can make yogurt, you can make different cakes, you can make different hard boiled eggs. Um, but I normally just use, I just program my own times. And on the old one, they had a button that said manual, which confused people because they didn't understand what that was. But they've now changed that button to be pressure cook. So you press pressure cook and then you adjust the time with plus or minus to what you want to do. So I'm going to put it to 35 and then you just, so it's on high and you can change the pressure to high to low, but this is what we want. 35 minutes on high. Can people even see this <laughs> anyway? And so then this is going to do its own thing and it'll take about 15 minutes to come to high pressure and then once it reaches high pressure, that's when it's going to start counting down from 35 minutes. But even when it's totally done and it says it's done, you want the pressure to come down naturally and that could take like 20 minutes. So once it's like done cooking, I normally turn this off. I set the timer um, for 20 minutes and then I come back when that dings and then if this is not complete, if the pressure hasn't completely released, um, which you can tell because the, there's gonna be a little thing that pops up when it's at high pressure. If it's not all the way down, um, you just release the valve and let the rest of the pressure go. And you can't open it if it's under high pressure. So that is why, even though it says 35 minutes, this recipe will probably take an hour and 15 minutes total from start to finish to cook. But that's why, because this is something that keeps warm, you should make it in the morning and it'll be done whenever, like sometime later in the morning, but you can keep warm until you come home at night and then you can either eat it just straight from the Instant Pot, or you can crisp it up, which is how I'm gonna show you how to do it here. So, yeah. I'm going to bombard you with questions. Okay. So, um, do you have any set book tour dates? 
Uh, or no, not, not dates, I mean places. Yes, we have one. Uh, so we have a few things. So I have a few appearances lined up. There are, there's one before our book comes out um, in Sonoma on May 20th, I think it's May 21st. Because it's a two-day um, sunset weekend celebration for Sunset Magazine. I will be there doing a cooking demo and a book signing. But I think we will actually have a copy of our brand new book, like a super, super advanced copy um, that we can show people there. So if you can come to that, that would be great. Um, and then we have two events that are already pre-planned. We have one at Book People uh, in Austin, I think in August at the end of August, August 25th, um, <laughs> I think. And then I have a really cool two-day paleo retreat in the Santa Cruz Mountains with my friend, Dr. Akil Pollan Asami, which I think sounds really, really awesome. And there's like a 20% discount right now. So if you're a newsletter subscriber, I sent that information out. Um, but, you know, I think we're hoping to do Powell's in Portland. Uh, and then we're going to a bunch of other places. Nothing's confirmed yet. We have to actually talk to our publisher tomorrow to kind of figure things out. So what I have here is some carnitas I made a few days ago. Oh, there's winners. No, there's not. There's <laughs> no winners. We haven't even picked anyone yet. Whoops. So you can keep um, So this is some carnitas that I've just, when this is done and I'm not going to eat it right away, I just put everything into a, um, you know, a sealed container with the liquid and the fat. And then when I'm ready to uh, heat it up, I just grab a cast iron skillet. Like this is like a little cast iron skillet. This is my favorite little eight inch lodge. Oops, I should keep it here. That um, I fry the kids eggs in every morning. But this is actually a really good size if you're like reheating enough for like two or three people. And so in here, I dig out the little pieces of, actually they're not big, the big pieces of carnitas. So uh, when you said Sonoma, um, did mm -hmm. you mean like the city or did you mean like Sonoma County? Sonoma City in Sonoma County. So if you just Google Sunset Celebration Weekend uh, 2017, you can find out more information about it. There's a lot of really cool people who are going to be there that I'm really excited to uh, meet and a lot of people that I know that I'm excited to see again. All right, so as I said before, this is a really hearty dish. So I'm gonna fry enough, I think, for like two, because you guys don't wanna be here forever. But if you were to fry them all, you can shred it all and then fry it all. Um, another way to do it, if you don't wanna like, fry it in a cast iron skillet, is you can put it all on a rim baking sheet and put it under the broiler to brown. Um, or if you don't like it crispy, because some people don't like their carnitas crispy, they will um, just reheat it. So I would probably scoop the fat off of that and dump everything into a pot and reheat it. And then it'll be nice and tender. And all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of breaking up the pieces and then I'm gonna throw them in this pan. So, do the Siete uh, tortillas have a strong, like, coconut flavor? No, they don't, right? Do you think they do? No. I mean, um, I, I'm well, someone that cannot taste coconut. Like, I love coconut, and I don't think anything tastes coconutty when I add coconut yeah. to it. Whereas my kids are like, oh, it tastes like coconut. But, you know, Ollie, who's also super picky, um, but he has to eat gluten-free, he really likes the cassava and coconut ones, and he doesn't complain about it tasting coconutty. So I would compare them to like almost like a halfway point between like a flour tortilla and a corn tortilla. Hmm. Almost. Right. So this is hot. So I'm gonna, so there's a little bit of um, ghee in here. So do you keep the liquid? Uh, you know what I actually do with the liquid? I will keep the liquid, I'll take the fat off, and then I'll, I'll dilute the liquid to make soup. And it's really, really good. <laughs> and it, it forms a nice gel. Um, all I'm doing is I'm just kind of, so there is some liquid here, but if you just start patient, the liquid will evaporate and then it'll all get crispy. So I'm gonna leave that there. And I have like a, a little griddle here that I'm gonna heat up the tortillas. 
And then while we're waiting, I'm gonna just have Lauren pick the three winners right now, and then I'll sh and I'll finish assembling a taco for you guys once this is all crisped up. Are there other questions? No. Oh wait. So oh so because this isn't done, and because I just kind of showed you my refrigerated leftover carnitas. So one thing I do when this is done is I fish out the bay leaf, I fish out the onion and the garlic. Um, so the orange peels are pretty small, so I don't really bother fishing them out. And then I just fry up the meat. And if this looks like it's getting too, um, it looks like it's too dry or if it's sticking, then I add a little more cooking fat. This smells really good. This smells like, this smells like carnitas. Like I love my Kahlua pig. I think it's really simple and delicious and it's a really good bang for your buck. And I used to fry them all the time and um, you know, pretend they were carnitas. Yeah. But this actually does taste and smell like carnitas. Um, I mean the Kahlua pig I think is great because it's really versatile and it's, you know, it's just seasoned with pork and bacon. Um, whereas this definitely has more Mexican flavors, and so if you want like Mexican carnitas, you should make these. And so I'm just gonna kind of cook it until it's crispy and sound bits. And you can see when I break it up, like this is like a piece that has a bunch of kind of tendony stuff that my kids get all queasy about. I'll save it for me. I end up eating all of those because those parts are actually really good for you. Like everyone's like all like, oh, I want to buy collagen and buy like collagen peptides. Well, you should just eat, you know, the funny bits in your meat and they'll get collagen naturally. All right, so this is good. That's nice and crispy. It's not like crispy. Oh, thank you very much. You got to your product placement. Yes. <laughs> Again, they're not a sponsor. I love their stuff. And so I asked them, I just emailed them and said, hey, can you guys please sponsor this giveaway on Facebook Live for my viewers? Because I think they would really like it. So that was really easy. And you can see how you could just make a big bunch of it. Let me turn this off. Can you unplug this? It's not making so much noise. Uh, which one? Which plug is it? So the one, one that's yeah. That okay. One. The one that's attached to it. Thank you. No wow. one that no. All right. So then I'm gonna heat up. I people have asked which ones are my favorite. Um, I like both the almond flour and the cassava and coconut. But this one I like more the cassava and coconut for tacos because I think it's a little more bendy. Whereas the almond flour, I actually like to make. I like to like fry these ones until crispy. And then I use them kind of as like um, tostadas and stuff. Um, so this griddle should be nice and hot. And you can see here it's still Oh, we have winners. Hot. Okay, cool. Ooh, nice. I kind of overlooked it maybe. Okay. So, um, so who are the three winners? Shakira Coates. Um, Shakira? She, I think. Um, Rick Englehart. Rick Englehart. And April Hunt. And April Hunt. Congratulations, you three. You will get a six pack of um, tortillas. We, um, Lauren will contact you guys to get your shipping address. But that's it. That was really amazing. So thank you. Um, and I'm going to continue. You know, I know that I shouldn't probably use my fingers, but I always do. <laughs> so I just, you know, I keep on flipping them over on medium heat until they are, they will actually puff up like real tortillas. And then, let's see, in terms of what I put in my tacos, it changes, it kind of changes with what I have. Um, when I don't have uh, siete tortillas, I use butter lettuce as my wrapper. Oh, my knives, okay. <laughs> But like here, Owen's, one of Owen's favorite toppings are white onion and cilantro. So I have some diced white onion. This is how I keep my cilantro in the fridge. I put a plastic bag over it loosely and then this stays uh, fresh in my fridge for like 
a long time, like 10 days or something. And so then I just, and I rinse this and, you know, shake them off before I stick them in this uh, mason jar with some water, just so I can quickly grab them and cook with them. And so I just roughly chop it. You don't care that it's really small, right, Owen? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't care. Yeah. And obviously, if you don't like cilantro, you don't need to put these on. That's what I was about to say. I'm surprised you like cilantro. It took me a long time to like cilantro. Like huh. When I was little, I used to, or at least I used to think I hated it. And so I'd always ask for it um, to be removed from everything. But I think one day I had no choice and then I ate it and I was like, wow, this is pretty good. I think it's because I can't really, I don't even really know what cilantro tastes like by itself. And I just eat it in a bunch of things like with cilantro. So I think that's like made me like it, I guess. And so then um, I also like to squeeze lime on my carnitas. Oh, and uh, by the way, is there any water in the um, mason jar or? Yeah. Okay. Let me see. So it's like, oh. and I change the water every few days. The feed is. You just gone? Glitching. I mean, uh -oh. oh well, okay. good thing it's almost over. So then I cut a lime, and the way I've shown you guys many times how I cut limes, that these two poles of the lime I cut um, parallel to it. Whoa. And so that way you get lots and lots of exposed cut surface area. So when you squeeze them, lots of juice comes out. And so you don't have to microwave it or roll it or do any of those tricks to get more lime juice out. Like this way, you'll get a ton when you cut it. And then this part is just the middle white part that you would discard anyway. And sometimes I even twist this and squeeze this for extra juice. So you get a ton of juice when you cut it that way. Um, the tortilla yeah, should be good. Yeah, I think it's actually a little. See, super bendy, even though I kind of left it longer than I wanted to. See, if I was a professional, I'd have plates out already, but I'm not. Um, and so then I like to put avocado as well. And a good way, like when you're at the store and you're trying to feel if an avocado is ripe, I mean, you can always feel, and like this one is nice and it kind of gives a little bit, you wanna feel it? Yeah, actually, it's not like overly mushy or like overly hard. And you want one that still has a stem on it. Oh, see, look. This has already reached high pressure and it took maybe 10, 15 minutes and now it's starting to count down at 35 minutes. So if we were eating this for dinner, which I don't think we are, we're gonna probably eat the leftovers, um, it's, it, it will take a little while. And so you always wanna look to see the avocados that have the stem left in because when you pop it off, you can see if it's all moldy inside. Because sometimes when it's soft, it's because it's moldy, but this one, it looks like it's nice and like light green. So I think, my fingers are crossed, that uh, this one is The good. moment of truth. I think it is okay. I hope it's okay. Oh, oh. the seed cracked in half, but it <laughs> looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna pop it out. It's annoying that the seed cracked in half. So I just use my finger and I pry it out. Like there's always all those tricks where you like put the heel of your knife in and turn it, but I always think it's just easier to use my finger to peel it off. And then people are always wondering like in my pictures, how I get my avocado to look good. And I just peel off the skin as opposed to scooping out um, the flesh because when you scoop out, sometimes it doesn't look as good. But the problem with peeling is sometimes you have these darker spots so if it's like for a picture for the blog, I will use like a spoon to carefully scrape off the brown spots, but I'm not gonna do that because we're just gonna eat it. And then I just use a sharp knife and I slice, I know you guys can't see, I slice really thin and I take maybe, here, that's probably good, like a little bit less than a half, so maybe like a third, and then you can always like fan it out and then it looks nice and you can put it on, you know, it's Instagram worthy. 
So I will go and assemble this taco. So again, this is a siete tortilla. Uh-oh. should put it on here to... I think it'd be way too long and because I toasted it a little more, it's less pliable than it should be, but that's my fault, not siete's. So you add some... So uh, what is your cutting board made out of? Oh, this one? This is like a cheaper one. Um, <laughs> That is from Ikea from years ago. I think it's a plastic one. I have wood ones. I have other plastic ones. I kind of go between plastic and wood um, only because the plastic ones I can throw in the dishwasher. Um, and sometimes that's just way more convenient. And I added like the white onions and the cilantro. Oh, actually, I'm gonna put some salsa. So this is a salsa I really like. It's by a local company called Primavera. The only thing I don't love about it is they used um, canola oil, but <laughs> otherwise I really like it. And so then I put a little bit of salsa on here. And then I put this on top. Sometimes I add a little bit on top here because it looks better. And I can squeeze some lime on here. And that's it. And I'm gonna give this to Owen. Yay. Taco! So anyway, there you go. This is how you can make carnitas at home by yourself in your Instant Pot. This is a great make-ahead dish because you can always fry it up later just like I did. You could come home to a pot of hot carnitas that you can eat fresh from the pot. Um, but you guys should definitely try this at home. And you can see that there's nothing crazy in terms of ingredients. And how is it? It's pretty good. Have Thank you even bitten it? Hello. <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you Owen for answer, uh, asking questions. Thank you Lauren for answering questions behind the scenes. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Congrats to the three winners and thank you Siete for providing everything. And that's it. Thank you.